Now to uh, go back to using authentic uh, listening material again. I want to talk about something called micro-listening, another term from John Fields. Uh, John Fields makes this point that oftentimes we put on a, a listening text, do some comprehension questions, and that's not really teaching listening, it's testing listening. And he recommends playing very short stretches and analysing them closely, uh, something he calls micro-listening. And from the perspective of pronunciation, I think that's the right way to go. I want to show you some listening types along the lines of micro-listening. This one is a, an audio concordance. You know what a concordance is, but uh, you've not often seen one for bits of audio. Let's try this. Do you actually know? Do you actually know? Do you actually know? If you actually highlight, if you actually highlight, if you actually highlight. Have you actually met them all? Have you actually met them all? Have you actually met them all? But it's actually, but it's actually, but it's actually. It's actually 90, it's actually 90, it's actually 90. <laughs> <laughs> Those are from, from the um, radio program at the beginning. What's the uh, purple word? <laughs> actually. Actually is a very vulnerable word because it's um, frequent. Because it's not really, not really being used as a lexical word, it's being used as a discourse marker. And the uh, thing about discourse markers is they tend to be kind of thrown away on the assumption that uh, the other person can more or less intuit. You just say, Ech, and you, you already know it, so actually. <laughs> right? Wrong. Your students go, well, what was that sound in the middle? And then they're distracted by trying to work out what that was for the rest of the day listening. Hmm. So you need to uh, warn them in advance that they're going to hear weird noises like that. <laughs> and uh, what those noises might be, and why you don't need to worry about them. If the speaker is throwing it away so fast, the speaker doesn't care too much whether you hear it, right? The speaker, if they really want you to understand the words, will emphasise it. Yet students always fixate on the bit that they didn't hear, the bit that the speaker was doing less work on. Ironically, it should be the opposite way, go with what you hear properly. And uh, so, audio concordance is a, an idea uh, to train the brain, kind of putting uh, one of John Field's traces in there, going, ah, that actually thing is actually, get used to that. And you can do that for other similar discourse markers and uh, bits and bobs that get thrown in authentic speech. So I'm calling that an audio of importance. The three times repetition, I think, mesmerizes to it in some of it's more than some of its parts, that repetition, I would say. Yeah. It reminds me of, of that, uh, what you get uh, in disco called scratching, when you hear a bit of a record and it goes back and goes back and goes back. It's sort of mesmeric and sticks in the brain more that way, I think. Uh, try it out. How, do you, how are you going to try it out? Well, there aren't many published materials with this kind of stuff, so you have to make your own. Okay? Um, that's the bad news. <laughs> and here's how you do it, that's the good news. Uh, I use, personally, I use a program called Wayfab, but you have to pay for that. This one is free, and it does the same job. So, you can download it from this address. And what happens is, you take your piece of text, it can be an authentic text off the radio, or whatever source you have, a podcast, and then you um, upload it into Audacity and it comes out like that. So you get a kind of uh, display, peaks and troughs, and you can see all the bits. You play it and you listen, and you can see uh, the marker going up along the um, display. So you can see the bits. Then you can choose the bits you want, the bits you want to make your micro listening, to make your audio concordance. Choose it, highlight it, in much the same way as you highlight text in words. 
moving the uh, cursor across, mm -hmm. it comes up blue. Yeah. You press, uh, you go up into your, uh, into the edit, and you do a uh, copy, and then you open a new file in that corner. Open a new file, and then you go back into this um, menu, and you press copy, you know, paste, sorry, paste, and there you have it. If you press paste again, you get it twice. Paste it down three times. <laughs> then you can go back to the original script, find some more bits that you want to include, and repeat the process. This has uh, some more bits from the uh, Liverpool the nosy speakers that we listened to at the beginning. I've uh, transcribed them as they sound to me, also with the phonetic letters. So have a listen to this. I must have about. I must have about. I must have about. Through it all the time, I think. Through it all the time, I think. Through it all the time, I think. I don't even speak to you. I don't even speak to you. I don't even speak to you. They can see anything. They can see anything. They can see anything. If you don't know, find one another. If you don't know, find one another. If you don't know, find one another. I agree uh, with. Because you said that they were very fast at times, and uh, I chose some of the fast, fast bits for analysis. Um, that's a bit tricky, right? Let's try it again. I must have a boat. I must have a boat. I must have a boat. Through it all the time, I think. Through it all the time, I think. Through it all the time, I think. I don't even speak to you. I don't even speak to you. I don't even speak to you. They can see anything. They can see anything. They can see anything. If you don't know if I want another week. If you don't know if I want another week. If you don't know if I want another week. It's the same thing, slowed down. Right? So. I wanted to say that so you can do with audacity, you can slow down bits to help with this analyzing business. Because when you look at this, we're looking at the same process as we saw before with the uh, variation according to speaker and variation according to context. You've got your uh, resyllabification, your additions, your uh, assimilations, and you've got your uh, accent differences, in this case, uh, Liverpool accents. Um, all of that in an actual piece of authentic text rather than just some activity cooked up by me. Um, and you play it slowly, and here's how you do it. You just go into the effect menu, choose change tempo. Not change speed, change tempo. If you change speed, you do <laughs> change tempo. And uh, you can make it twice the length, for example. You can get it and really analyse what's going on in those bits. So, that's a, I would call this acoustic drilling. Where you get a small piece, have it repeating, uh, um, maybe slowing it down. So that's a kind of drill, but normally we think drills are productive, right? You repeat after me. But this is, uh, the students are silent in this drill. Although they may be kind of mentalizing it, or even sort of speaking along, but it's, uh, the point of it is uh, to do an equivalent for listening as drilling does for speaking, the equivalent. So, that's uh, micro-listening, or that's the one tool you could use to make your own. I've not done this, but um, if you're ambitious, your students could make their own little micro-listings as well. Um, but uh, as I say, I haven't tried that. Give us a go. <laughs> so, reaching the end here. If you uh, want this handout on the ele electronic form, you can get it off uh, my website here. Go into talks and uh, find the title down the column. The handout's there. There are also other bits of material you can download off this. Um, and I've recorded this as well, so if it's come out any good, I'll put that on. Edit it a little bit. Maybe make it repeat, 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 repeat. <laughs>
So you can listen to that. Thank you very much. Now, any questions? You said something about vulnerable models. What about deep things? Well, I don't know for me. Yeah. I think I think it's only the same bucket. I have to admit that the, the vulnerable models are not all the possible ones. I just uh, chose the ones which are tend to move by one complete training rather than another thing. Would you use this from the very beginning with the beginners absolutely? No, probably not. Um, I think it would be using a text like the one we just listened to. But uh, I can't see any reason why you might take your coursework sentences and uh, play around with them in this way. Um, if you want to do this audio acoustic brilliant thing. I think it would be a good thing, but not using this type of authentic listening. What level would you say you would use this type? I teach uh, basic and advanced, so I was thinking, I was thinking it would be good with the basic level, with the beginners, not that, but... Uh, Different types? No, it's something really good. Yeah. And uh, something similar. Yeah. It's not rocket science, actually, what I just said about audacity. It used to be so easy. In the old days, in the 80s, we had uh, these uh, cassette recorders by Philips. You can play the cassettes, wind back, but well, it's still playing. Well, yeah. You can do it repeating. You can make it go slow by turning a thing. So easy. <laughs> so this technology is just reconstructing the harder way what we had easily in the past. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Did you say there was a difficulty? Um, <laughs> Can you repeat that? No. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm using this word concordance here wrongly. I'm using, uh, you know how concordance is presented on the page with the uh, keyword down the middle? It's in that respect. It's not searching any database and getting all the examples. No, you're doing that yourself. You're choosing the example. So it's not a concordance, really. It's, it's not uh, electronically done. It's done by sheer hard work. But you're presenting it with the keyword down the, down the middle. In that sense, it's like a component. So would there be a list? Would we find a list of keywords which are vulnerable? Um, you might look at John Field. John Field has a list of that kind as well. John Field's book is uh, listening in a language classroom. He's got a list of that kind. Ah. Right. Thank you very much.